welcome to A Resource Life. My name is Chris. Thank you so much for joining me. In this episode, I want to go over two crazy trends that are going on right now with eBay, and everyone should definitely pay attention. So please smash the like button and consider subscribing because I give you guys one to three tips every single episode to help you get to the next level in your business. So I want to go over two trends that are happening right now. Let me know in the comment section below if you agree or not. So right now, this is very awkward, okay, because I feel like, just from observing things, two things are happening. One, companies are either doing awesome, they're killing it because they're selling something that's related to what's going on right now, or uh, companies are doing really bad right now. They're closed, they're not earning any revenue. There is PPP, there is money coming in to help businesses, but it's just the government printing money, right? So it's not... It's not really real goods and, and services being exchanged. They just reshut down California. So, okay, these are the two trends that I'm seeing right now. Companies are killing it or companies are doing bad. So this is what's happening right now. This is very interesting. There are a ton of new liquidated goods coming out. You'll see people are killing it at Ross, Marshalls. Just companies are opening in the first day. They're doing 50% off, 75% off. They're going crazy on discounts to get everything to start working again. So if you're a reseller, awesome. There's some amazing deals to be had right now. Maybe a good time to start a resale business, or is it? The uh, reason why I say that it might not be, so I don't know if it's because I've been doing a better job on my channel or just the economy is kind of weird right now, but the, the need to start a side hustle is on fire. People want to do their own gig right now. They're sick of working for the man. So that has a couple of challenges that come with it. But I think that right now, the want to build a resale company is at an all-time high. There seems to be way more resellers than there were before. I don't know if you guys are feeling the same thing, but there's a lot of new YouTube channels talking about it. There's a lot more interest. So I don't know if it's just on my end, but I'm feeling huge new wave of resellers, huge wave of liquidated inventory. Companies are calling it quits and not reopening, right? So that being said, what does that do when there's a bunch of supply and the demand is basically the same? How I see it is prices are going to drop. So let me know what you guys think. I think there's going to be a ton more stuff to sell, a lot more resellers. What that's going to cause is the price to sort of tank overall. The whole thing is going to drop. But if you're an eBay seller, you got to pay promoted listings. Um, you might now be, have to do a little bit more volume because – Prices are a little bit lower. At least that's been my experience. Things are selling just as fast, but there's a lot of stuff in the market. So what that means is you might have to get a bigger facility. You might have to hire more people. So your expenses are starting to rise, which makes us a little bit more challenging. Uh, people who've been doing reselling for a while have noticed. I used to hear the, the old quote unquote old timers would say, back in the day, I only needed to list at five items a day and I made a, a six figure income. I have not had that experience with reselling. It's been a hard for me the whole time. There hasn't been like just list a thing and it sells immediately for double retail. I don't know what the golden days were like. But for me, it has been more complicated in the last three years of reselling. There's now cross-listing. There's more platforms. eBay introduced a heavier um, promoted listings tax, right, to make sure they're getting paid their own. And eBay, you know, make no mistake, eBay is making record profits right now. People are worried about eBay. eBay is fine. eBay hasn't really done anything. But realize, people can't go to retail shops right now and buy stuff. Okay, they are loading up online. There's people doing $100,000 a day in mask sales, hand sanitizer, soap, things that people actually need. eBay is making record profits in that. It's the expendable income, random stuff that people are buying less of. I can't think of anything I would need less right now than any kind of vintage or antique item as like number 1,000 on my list of things to worry about. I'm constricting. I'm like saving as much money as possible. I'm like, I learned how to change my own oil during this situation. Like I'm thinking about what's the cheapest I could live in case this gets really bad. We don't even, it honestly hasn't been that bad yet. Okay, it could get way worse. And so I'm just like preparing myself for shit that really hit the fan. I don't really know if this is definitely not the bottom. Okay. It's being very strange right now. People are going crazy. Um, Bluegrass pickers talking about sports cards. That's true. I think that right now there are certain categories that are on fire, but that's just the same thing that I was saying before. 
certain categories are on fire, other categories are dead. There's one or the other. So this is where I think this is where I think it's moving. So let me know what you guys think. You have to have really, really, really good skills to run an awesome business right now. Because I do think you need to either do more volume. That's one 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 thing. There's more stuff to sell. Get it in. Like right now, you guys are know I'm shifting to consignment. I'm working on some different softwares. I'm testing it. So this is a barcode that came in on one of the softwares that I'm testing. It's been very cool, right? So um, this barcode will go on every single item. It's, it's so I can keep track of all the consigners. I basically put out one ad saying, hey, I'm looking for stuff. And it was overwhelming. I had to turn it off because so many people are looking to make extra money right now. So you're going to have to be really skilled and learn how to sell more things at less price. Or let's talk about bluegrass, pick, bluegrass picker. Right now, if you are a sports card company, and you're in a hot category. Guess what? You're in control. Everybody wants what you want. Everybody's looking to make extra money. Everybody's looking to put their money somewhere. You have insane control right now. So guess what? You're only going to work with people you trust, people with an awesome reputation. You're only going to work with the best people. Okay, so people are emailing me saying, Chris, I can't get a supplier to work with me. And that makes sense. Why would they work with you right now? Who... Who, raise your hand if you're looking for profitable inventory at a good price. Everyone. Why would they work with you when you're tiny, when there's all these like established companies that have really, really deep pockets looking for the same exact stuff? So it's kind of weird right now. I was actually going to name this video, It's Time to Swallow Your Pride, okay? Because I feel like there's a lot of entitled people thinking that this is supposed to be super easy when really right now you've either got to be an expert at moving volume of cheaper stuff, or you've got to get in the bed or be really close or have a fantastic reputation and work with the top companies who have all the control right now. And you're basically just an employee. Okay, that's my thought. You're just an employee. What's up, Patty? So I just think that if you're selling something right now that's super hot, you have all of the control. You can pick who you want to work with. This is why I see a lot of people who are moving towards just wanting to represent brands. So believe it or not, there are resellers who've been very, very talented and made a great living going more towards a job. I know that's shocking for a lot of people, but for me, you know, there's a lot of risk involved in, in what's going on with this because, you know, I'm trying to start a family eventually, right? And I'm newly married. I don't want to be that risky. I'm not I'm, I'm not a young buck anymore. I can't do whatever I want. There's other people that are depending on me now. It w- it would not surprise me if I decided to do something that was a little bit less risky. Right? Move into because uh, I think this is going to last for a while. Maybe go into an industry where I'm just working for a company that's crushing it right now for a little while because it's going to get rough. So I just want people to realize. I hope you guys are being conservative and thinking about a few things, thinking about building your skills up. You've got to really build up your skills right now. Okay. May not be the best time to watch Netflix or screw around because right now there's a, there's a, there's something building up right now. We haven't seen any negative effects really in the economy. Nothing crazy has happened because of what's going on yet where I live, people haven't worked in four months. How's it possible that there hasn't been this crazy catastrophic thing yet? Um, finally, I do know now probably 10 people who have lost someone they know to coronavirus. Now, this is a little funky, right? Because we don't know if it's because of the coronavirus or it's because their immune system was weak and maybe they died from whatever it is. It's an interesting situation right now. My point is, it's going to slowly have some kind of big effect. So I think right now, I'm working on the skill of getting really, really good at running my store. I'm also looking to either partner or work for companies that are killing it because I just feel like that's where it's moving. Companies are huge right now. Okay. And I just think that imagine you like work for Zoom and, you know, during this crazy time, you hire 10,000 people at your company, right? Who who knows? Maybe you work in retail for a small mom and pop shop that had 20 stores and now all 20 stores are closed permanently. That's happening at the same time, but it hasn't hit yet because 
there's PPP right now, and these companies are being are being floated. So it's kind of blowing my mind. Um, the family flips. What's up? Yeah. So it's interesting. The li- Joe and Jessica are saying that in a world of change. So guys, follow the family flips if you haven't before. The learner shall inherit the earth. I I agree with that. Right now is gonna is an interesting time. I just feel like. There's people with control that are getting more and more control. Okay, let me just back up for a moment here and talk about where I live. I'm in California. And the tax bracket, it's essentially like half of my money goes to the government, which means, okay, this is what that means. It's sort of like they are, they actually own my company. Okay, because it seems like they, they make more than me sometimes. When you're looking at 50 cents of every dollar going to them, they are controlling so much they can say like, okay, all businesses are closed. We can take half your money. It's kind of bizarre. Okay, so even though you're thinking like, I'm on my own, I'm a freelancer, you're still working for somebody. So I think right now, this is so weird for people to hear that are like, I don't want to work for the man. You you probably want to get really good at working for the man right now. Understand tax laws. Understand what's going on because it's about to get really funky. You know, I just, I don't see it not having some kind of crazy change. And I am optimistic, okay, because I've had a couple of record months during this time, but it doesn't seem real. I don't know why I'm having record months because it's not, it doesn't seem real to me. I'm like, I'm like holding on, like this is going to, this is about to blow up. I don't know. Um, let's see. Nice sun this wintry morning. What's up, Julius from Toronto? Um, I just, I right now, I want everyone to develop a really strong reputation. That's really important. Think about your your website. Think about the way you conduct business, your business cards, the way you present yourself. Watch what you say online right now because reputation is really all we have right now. And the people right now who are making the most money, guys, this is, it's hard, it's, uh, right now, I feel like the people who are making the most money are employees. They're not the owners of companies. And that's bizarre to think about. In a world where the American dream is sort of to start your own business, build it up one day, may have a, a high income and also be able to sell your company for something at the end. That's like the American dream, rags the riches. The people who are earning the most money are not the people who take that risk, okay? It's because they're, you know, Sometimes there's risk and there's you can lose because of that, right? So it's not those people. It's the invaluable people who work for these companies that are indispensable and they need those people. And those people are being paid sometimes more. So it's hard to think of, like, it's hard for me to suggest you would make, you probably will make more money working for somebody else right now. That sounds really bizarre to me, but I think it's true. You have to get really, really good at reselling where you'll end up making a ton of money. But if you're just average at reselling, I'm going to compare you to like an Uber driver. I don't know that many Uber drivers that slay. They're not really killing it because they're sort of, they're at the mercy of who they get to pick up. If somebody's like, yes, drive me 3,000 miles. Yes, they might come up like a couple grand in that ride all the way across the country. But how rare is it that someone's going to want to go 3,000 miles in your Uber? This is like you being a treasure hunter at Goodwill. You don't really know what's going to happen. There's a lot more people now at Goodwill. Goodwill now has their own online store. Is that really where you want to go? And then if you try to approach companies with no reputation, no money, and your store doesn't look very good, why are they going to work with you? So it's kind of like you have a great online store, People are like, yo, why don't you sell my stuff? Our brick and mortar is closed. You look like you're great at selling stuff. Take over. So that is really, really bizarre. Um, Damon John is saying the coronavirus is exposing what every business strength. And yeah, I mean, definitely. But there's also businesses getting lucky. There's also businesses that are failing to no fault of their own. Okay, so... As an example, let's say you had a really, really strong business um, that specialized in in dine-in, 
right? And of course, this is the weakness, right? Maybe you're a restaurant focusing on dining and, and now this virus hits and you have to switch to takeout. You had no, no like business, no experience doing t- a takeout business. The thing is, that's not, that's kind of a business weakness, but like, it's hard to be a business that's both good at takeout and dining. Those are t- two different experiences. Because if you're focused on making a business that's dining experience, you're like focused on making the, the environment super nice, nice tables, nice wait staff, making it super nice. I just, it's bizarre thinking about how like, it's almost like the people who are involved in services, these are the people that killed it. People who are moving products, it's way more scary, you know. Um, the family flips is saying I need to re- relocate business to a more tax friendly city and state. I thought about this. Okay. So we, we drove around and looked at different, um, different places to live, um, in the Bay area. And honestly, it's, it's not, I feel like it's not worth it to live somewhere else because here I get to see so much stuff. It's like, I'll give you guys an example. Um, I grew up in Utah. And I didn't learn anything. I didn't know how anything worked. I feel like I was a complete moron because I didn't understand how cities work, how commerce works, how the world is just a really big place. And when you grow up not in a city, you don't, I feel like you don't understand. You don't, you're not exposed to extreme poverty. You don't get to see a lot of trends. The education level in cities is a lot higher. So you just meet people who, know more stuff and when you meet people like it, it's really hard to like meet people here that aren't in the top 10 percent of what they do and i feel like that's an inspiring place to live of course yes there's a price you have to pay it's literally quadruple as expensive to live here than some places but i don't know if i would change it i don't see any the only advantage i can see living in the middle of the country is it's cheaper what's the what are the other advantages besides the super cheap like I get that cheapness allows you to have more runway, but with the exception of my mortgage, I only spend uh, with my wife under two grand a month for everything. That's including health insurance. So, I mean, it's just a cheaper mortgage. What else is better about living in the middle of the country? I don't, I don't know. I feel like it's like, do you want to raise your kids where they'll get a lot of exposure and a lot of understanding or shelter them? I grew up in Utah. I feel like I was, I, I didn't know anything. As soon as I, I had no idea how hard life was growing up in Utah. It just was not, I had no understanding. Once I started to travel too, like if you haven't traveled, if you think the United States is the best country, that's maybe you haven't traveled before. Cause I've been 73 different places and I can think of 20 places where the standard of life is much higher than here. So it's not, it's, it's only like the the best country in the sense that like the innovation is unreal here. There's so every, this is the only country where there's insane diversity. That's, that's the main thing about living here. It's awesome. But as far as standard of living, no standard of living here is, is um, I, I would argue the standard of living here is among the worst because like, it's I don't know. It's just I don't know. I wouldn't say that the standard of living in the United States is, is super high. Education, though, it is just mind blowing. You know, like okay, let me give you an example. I don't know if you guys will. will I just want you to think about this. I used to live in in Utah, right? I grew up there. When I was 18 years old, I had never met a woman that made six figures before, ever. Okay, that that. None, zero. I had never met a woman that made six figures before at age 18. Okay, so I went to school at the University of Utah. When I was 23, I moved to Manhattan. Okay, my friend was like, Hey, do you want to go out to dinner? I said, Sure. Went out to dinner. No one, everyone just graduated, right? We're all 23 years old. Go to dinner. 23, mind you. Okay, there were eight women at the table. None of them had a salary under 100K. Okay, so for the, I went from never meeting one to eight in the same room. Okay, I, I, didn't, I didn't even know that, that this, these types of industries existed. So I, I'm not going to, you know what, I'm not going to blame this on Utah. I just feel like, you know, I just had no idea. Versus in the city, you see it. You can, 
I never saw people where I lived in Utah that had a crazy high education and made two hundred, three hundred, five hundred dollars an hour. I had never met that. That 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 had never occurred to me. Here, there are kids in high school that make two hundred and fifty grand because. They, knew, they know, okay, I saw that guy over there driving a Lamborghini. I asked him how he did it. He said it was because he was a programmer. So I went home and on YouTube, I taught myself programming and I, you know, boom. Like, that's just insane. Um, let's see. Also, um, I want to point out that um, Carolyn is saying, this is, this is such a weird thing. Carolyn is saying, my opinion is mine and it's not universal. This channel is not called Chris's opinion is more important than yours. It, it's nothing. It just, it is what it is. There's no reason to say that my opinion is my own. I already know that you, everyone, everyone has their own opinion. I'm not pretending like I know more than other people. I'm just saying that, that the name of this channel is make progress daily. You guys define what progress is for yourself, not me. And this is something that's missing. People aren't forming their own decisions. Carolyn is looking for me to give her the answers, maybe. She doesn't know about something, so she wants me to tell her the answer. Well, here's the real answer. You have to figure it out on your own. You make your own decisions. Okay, You get like three different opinions from three different people about something, then you form your own opinion. This is like really rare these days, apparently. So I want to point out a struggle. This, is, this, is, um, this came from... A gentleman in my group, he's having trouble with his printer, right? This is exactly what I feel like reselling is. Okay, back to reselling. He was trying to figure out his printer. He couldn't figure it out, right? So he went on to some site. They gave him some instructions that didn't really work. He was frustrated. He watched a YouTube video, didn't, didn't really explain anything. Got another YouTube video, didn't really explain any something. Then someone in the group recommended, hey, watch this YouTube video. And it was Eric, the college picker. Shout out to the college picker. He watched the video in three minutes. He figured out how to make his printer work. That's how I feel reselling is. You have to get a whole bunch of different people's opinions. And one of them, it's going to snap and then you'll get it. And then you'll be able to do that skill. That's how this works. I have never, there's no like one channel you can go to and magically you know how to do everything. I've, I've What channel is that? Um, so Tiffany Sue is talking about money not being important in the middle of America. But here's the thing. Okay. This is an another thing that's crazy. I don't think money is that important anywhere. It's just that you don't see the skill is what I'm talking about. When you live in a, in a city, you see some insane skills, like people who create things that are just super intricate that took 25, 30 years to develop. Of course, that exists in the middle of the country as well. I'm just saying that the exposure to that, because like I live in a city and I'm not super materialistic. So it just depends on, I don't know. I feel like, especially in the Bay Area, people here are more well-rounded. They stress education a lot and it's just different. I just feel like growing up in the middle of the country for me was a handicap. Maybe for other people, it's not. For me personally though, I wish I had just had one city friend that was like, Chris, you can do, the, the potentials are way bigger than you think. I just wish I knew that as a kid. I didn't see it. And sometimes you have to see it to really understand it as a kid. I didn't understand the insane inequality to, to see like people who make a million dollars a day in the same city as people who are homeless. It just, it's just like mind blown. Um, money is a scorecard. There we go. That's true. Money is a scorecard in how well you're doing in business. That's pretty much all it is. Um, you live in rural France, you get it. No one, no one where you live is as ambitious. I don't know. I just, I'm not, look, I like, I like rural America. I like the middle of America. In fact, this is the comment that I had. I put, I've been to a bunch of eBay meetings in the middle of the country and I, I made the comment that most of the people were over 50 and white. That was the comment that I made. And then somebody pointed out to me that most of America is white. And it depends which America you live in. Where, where I live, I don't think that's the case. I don't think that, I think half of the people where I live or less are white. So it depends on, it depends on where you live. So there's not one America. So I'm not making, okay, that's, I'll back up. Hmm. 
how do I say this? I'm from Utah. There is a lot of entrepreneurship where I live. I just feel like the exposure is different. It's hard for me to say. I guess if I grew up and um, I was in the neighborhood of people who like the Huntsman's or the Larry H. Miller family that ran all those car years. So there, there are entrepreneurial people in every single area. I just didn't see it like I did here. When I moved to New York City after college, I didn't, I didn't know anything. Every single person was hustling me. I didn't understand the insane foundations of people who like work 30 years on improving healthcare or something. I don't know. It's just insane. Um, sh- reselling a skill development. Yeah, I agree with that. My New York City experience was amazing. I love New York City so much. I recommend people try and live there for a while just to see what it's like. You just get to, to meet so many people. It's, it's, for me, a much more enjoyable experience than the Bay Area where I'm at right now because in the Bay Area, a lot of people are hidden. You do see it. You see the town everywhere. But New York City, Wall Street people, regular people, artists, fashion people all go to the same bars, restaurants. You'll meet a lady who's designing her own brand in the fashion district and she's just getting by green has her designs with her super super cool you know and also the guy that's in charge of gucci all in the same place right and that you just don't get that in a lot of places in the u.s um yeah i guess that's true patty was saying i just had a sheltered life i agree with that um I just, I think it, okay, maybe you guys can let me know in the chat what you think. Are you more sheltered if you grow up, do you have a higher chance of being sheltered if you grow up in a rural area versus an urban area? I guess that's my, that's my true question. Royal is asking, where are the most stable estate sales? Okay, great question. Um, I would say that the most stable estate sales are probably places that are year round warm, right? That would be huge. Um, I've heard from doing this for three years of the best estate and garage sales are in Chicago. I don't know if that's, that's true just because that area is Midwestern and a lot of goods move through there from both the West coast and the East coast. So I don't know what you, hopefully there's some Midwest people here in the chat um, that can let us know if they, if they think that's true or not. Um, but the middle of the country, I feel like at certain hubs, there's really good estate sales. And there's also some old money there. Um, old money is, has cooler stuff than, than uh, new money, in my opinion, from picking. Uh, yeah, Good Living is saying that they're in the Midwest and it's way better there. So that's just my, my, from what I've heard in the middle, it's, it's amazing. Um, yes, Royal is asking about the new policy on no insertion fees. That is very interesting um, because you guys are seeing, a, I, I feel like right now, um, Mercari is advertising like crazy. And uh, Mercari says no fees to sell your item. That sounds great. eBay can't really say that. eBay is like, we charge you fees even if your item doesn't sell. That's kind of an old school way of doing business, right? Because the new school way of business is free trial. Try it for 30 days. If you don't like it, we'll give you 100% of your money back. You know what? We're Zappos. We're Zappos, the shoe company, 365-day return policy. You buy the shoes, you wear them for a whole year. On day 364, if the soles are falling apart and they weren't to you, you didn't think that they were going to be like that after 364 days, boom, we'll give you a 100% refund. That's new school. eBay is one of the original, I feel like the OGs. They charge for everything. They charge for bold, insertion fee, like insertion fee. They charge you a store fee. They would, you know, every single thing is nickel and diming you. That's like the, they're the used car salesman of of, of e-commerce because everything costs money. It's not one flat fee. Like most websites at this point, it would be, you know, like imagine starting a company right now where let's say there's a chicken, you sell a chicken sandwich. Would you say that the chicken sandwich is 495 
Or would you say it's $3 for the chicken, 25 cents for the lettuce? Like, what is the point of doing that? eBay could just say final value fees are 13% instead of 11. And it would be easier to understand. It would be more new school in the way that it is. I think they should have gotten rid of the insertion fee a long time ago and just charge the final value fee. And that forces them to be a good website, right? Because then you're not just relaxing and making money off of all the crappy listings on eBay. Like you, you're forced to help people convert because that's when you get the money. Um, Edwin's asking how many platforms I sell. Probably five, five platforms, four or five platforms. Oh, it goes both ways. Just got a good point here. If you're raised in the city, you don't learn things that you would learn in the rural areas. 100% true. Um, I do feel like because I'm from Utah, um, I'm more personable. Like when I meet people, I really try to listen to what, what's going on with them. And I'm, it's not 100% for the money for me. Where, But it's not all people in the city are all about the money. You just, there are... Very few people, I feel like, in rural America that are all about the money. That That's something that I, I am going to make a generalization. I really don't meet people in Utah where their only, their only thing is money. But here in, in, in the Bay Area, definitely, you meet people. But again, I also meet people from Florida that are like, I'm all about the money, and that's all there is to it. So maybe, would you guys consider Florida East Coast? I feel like Florida is something different altogether. Um, let's see. Mercari's ads are so bad. Yeah, but they're everywhere. Good living on my summer sales down on shoes. No, all my categories are down, but not shoes. Um, Tiffany Soup. If you guys are still here, please smash the like button. I appreciate you guys stopping by. Uh, Flippin' Eric's had a $200 five day run. Congrats. Great job. Um, let's see. What if you find a product you want to sell, but can't find a manufacturer? Great question. Okay. This is where it goes back to like getting a job. If you want to work for a great product, they probably already have their own distribution channels. The only way to get really close to them would be to work with one of those distribution channels, which means you're going to be more like an employee than a reseller. So that's just the truth of the matter from, from my opinion. Wow. So eBay is saying that in a premium store, it goes from 1,000 free listings to 50,000 free listings for certain categories. That's very interesting, but again, kind of negligible. Because 1,000 a, a listings at $0.10 cents a piece is – it's a – a hundred bucks. It's not like that doesn't, that shouldn't, a hundred bucks shouldn't make or break your business. Tiago, do, do I have a VA that removes cross listing? Yes. So I use a VA agency called Hammock. Um, they list, cross list, and delist for me. Um, if you want to do it manually, I recommend List Perfectly, even though I'm not, I'm not an affiliate with List Perfectly. Um, the reason why, I don't recommend doing it yourself is because your time is really valuable. I recommend you only do grading and buying. Don't do any listing, cross listing, because your time is worth 50 bucks an hour and it costs $5 an hour, five or $6 an hour for a VA to do it for you. So unless you like cross listing or delisting, some people love opening up three windows and delisting on two platforms. Some people, that's like the, their favorite part of the day. For those people, continue to cross list and delist. For everybody else, have somebody else do it. Um, it's like, yeah, it, it's, it's not worth it. Um, you need a video to how to appeal cut scammers on eBay. Tyler, great question. Um, or great, great point. How do you appeal scammers on eBay? Guys, you can't. Um, I probably have 10 scam transactions to the left of me and I just, what, 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 I mean, how much time do you really want to spend on that? I'd rather spend time growing my business than worrying about those 10 scammers. But again, the one thing I did to adjust that was I just sold 
I like to sell old people's shoes and not collectible shoes. The more rare that the shoes are, the more heat they are, the more scams there are. So I just look to sell regular items. What's the difference between Mercari and Poshmark? Mercari sells everything. Poshmark only sells clothing, shoes, home goods. And Mercari's fee is 10% and Poshmark is 20%. I'm actually taking a step back from Poshmark just because it's it's been... I would rather spend that money on promoted listings. That sounds a little bit odd, right? But personally, um, I still cross list because it's inexpensive, but it's it's only because I don't actually do the work. If if I had to manually do it, I would just list on eBay only personally. Um, let's see. Tiffany lives in a tourist town of four to 6,000 people. Wow, that is nice with the minimal competition. Um, I, okay, this is a great way for you guys to check your competition. So first, smash the like button. Step two, enter in what you're selling. So let's say you're selling Samsung tal- Galaxy Tabs, right? This is a, a tablet that I'm not really looking into selling, but um, I got one. So... Um, Search for how many are available in your zip code, and you can see how competitive it is. How competitive it is around you for that specific market. So for me, I sell shoes within ten miles of where I live. There's like a hundred and ten thousand shoes for sale. With just in this little bubble of where I live, that's how many e-commerce sellers there are that are here. So it's kind of insane. Um. Living in big cities is invaluable because you increase the odds of serendipitous encounters. That's, that is interesting. You know, I don't, I think that that's true because where, if you live in a big city, there's just so much more opportunity, but again, it's also a pain in the ass to try to get around. There's just so, there's a lot, a lot to deal with in a big city. Um, Annie says slow start with hammock, but you can see it's scaling well. Yep, that's how I see it. Every time I work with somebody new or get a new employee or whatever, it just, it's, I don't know. It's slow at first and then it scales up higher. Ali, thank you for taking care of the chat. Let's see. Um, you're getting ready to list with Posh. Okay, Lil Dread, Lil Dread Riding Hood. This is a perfect opportunity for you to listen to the, the knowledge I gave well, gave in the beginning of the call, which is you need to make your own decisions. For some people, Poshmark is the only platform they sell on. For some people, Mercari is the only platform they sell on. For some people, eBay is the only platform. Some people sell on all three. Some people sell on two of the three. You need to decide with your inventory where you want to list it. And to be honest, all these platforms will work if you sell great items. Great items sell on any platform, and you don't need the cross list. This is important to recognize. You can go on to, let's say, StockX as a research tool, and you look at the most popular shoe. The most popular shoe on every platform will sell for almost the exact same price because the market is there. There's enough people looking for it. So it depends on what you sell. No one is going to have a problem selling an iPhone anywhere, locally, On eBay, on Mercari, not on Poshmark because it's not an allowable category, but it it just depends on what it is. No one has trouble selling Gucci ever. Okay, it's really popular. Um, Sebastian says, you want to see me lift? I will start uploading some videos. I'm still doing squat every day. It's the best thing ever. I'm a huge fan of um, overhead squats, front squats, making me super happy. NYC has great food. Agreed. Jose is saying he's making more money selling computers than clothes. That would make sense, especially right now. Boom. So Ed is saying, would I rather run around and thrift where my cost is less or buy in bulk from the wholesale liquidator? Both. Okay, so let me answer that question. I never want to thrift again manually. Unless it's for fun. I love thrifting for fun. If I'm in your town and you want to go thrifting, let's go. But if we find something cool, if it's under $1,000, I'll probably just let you sell it. Because there's so much time involved with 
researching it, listing it. I'd rather work on a replenishable or a relationship with a, a liquidator or a wholesaler. Those take a lot more time, but those relationships are worth tens of thousands of dollars, sometimes more than that, just getting one relationship going. Flippin, what's up? Flippin says he put out an ad asking for people to contact him with things they need sold. It works. Bluegrass Picker is killing it in a small city in the Midwest. Amazing. Again, I think if you were a picker, a true picker, then you maybe, I don't know, guys. I really struggle with this. If I was a true picker, meaning all I did was sell things I found, I don't know. Would you pick a big city where there's a thousand times more people and a thousand times more stuff, but most of the stuff is garbage? Or would you resell in a rural city where there's a lot less people and I assume the stuff's still junk, but there's a lot less competition. Would you rather be in, in a in a rural area? And also, there's probably not a lot of traffic. Here's a lot of traffic. I don't know. I don't know if I'd rather live in a in a, a rural area or an urban area. If I was just a true picker, only picked items to sell, no no wholesale, no replenishables, thrill of the hunt. I don't know. That's a, it's an interesting thought. So Mark M says that out of 5 million men's shoes, there's only 11,000 within 100 miles of northeast Indiana. Very cool. Very, very cool. Uh, Springfield, Missouri. I, I went to St. Louis on the Missouri side. How far is Springfield from Kansas City? Letha's saying Legos are, are great. Legos are, when are Legos not great? Legos are fantastic. Tiago is saying, as much as it hurts my craftsman side to have my own mic. Yeah, yeah, that, that's interesting. So um, so Tiago had a, a call with me um, and was, you know, he has a private label product. He, he's a craftsman. He makes something. And he's saying, should he outsource it potentially to have somebody else make it maybe in Asia or continue to make it here? Again, it depends. I think you have to be one or the other. You've got to either move volume or you've got to be handmade and make your brand really important and get important and cool people to wear your stuff. There's really no middle. I, I, that's, that's, that's how I look at it. There's always a market for fantastic, well-made goods. Because like, um, so like this is this leather, right? I was, um, the leather on my wallet, I feel like is awesome. And Tiago was able to identify what kind of leather it is by just looking at it. Right. So I thought that that was cool because he is in the market of, of leather goods. Right. So it's cool when you're really, really into something and you're a craftsman and you make really cool stuff. I love craftspeople. Those are the people that I want to have a beer with. Um, and again, when there's when there's more to it than just money, this is why I really, really, really want to get to the point where I don't need money. And I think that that's going to take me three to five years. So if I can just live like I am living right now, change my own oil, my expenses are like $968 a month. Myself and my wife, it's under two grand minus our mortgage, but I don't really consider that expense because we can sell the house and get that money back. Um, my raw expenses are under two grand. I just want to save all of my income and then just get off this money game and just hang out with craftsmen like Tiago and we'll make stuff together and not have to worry about it. Christian is saying rural areas have better deals. I don't know about that. I, I don't know. My Autism Miracle School says, do I recommend opening more than one eBay store? No, unless you're going to do a branded store that only sells one thing. Sorry, I need a drink of water. Keep the questions coming. Actually, really good questions today. All right, let's see. It all evens out with cities. Take advantages of what you got. I agree. Um, you would pick a small resort town. Okay, 
that's a good one. Shane, years ago, um, a picker was someone who sold to antique dealers. Oh, Shane, this is um, awesome. I didn't realize that. So pickers used to just sell to dealers. That that makes sense. I would love to be a dealer. That's actually, that's kind of what I'm looking to be is a dealer. I want people to bring their amazing finds here. I'll sell it, make a commission. That would be awesome. What's up, Greg? Thanks for stopping by. Um, what do I recommend if you have a sheer volume of inventory? Ooh, this is interesting. Um, it, Lil Dread, the reason why I would recommend for this, this for you is because you're new. I would just sell it all and keep your expenses as low as possible. Save 100% of your money. Sell all that stuff that you got from your family. Keep all that money and then think about what you want to sell while you sell all of it. Um, normally, I would say mix it up. Go find some cool stuff, right? Um, to flip, get into some some niches, go to some garage sales, thrift stores to get started and make that high profit. But you, since you're getting all that stuff from your family, you can kind of get an idea of what you like selling. Patty is saying, Tiago, sell on Amazon. I second that. Ooh, Joseph is saying, best is to live two hours away from large cities. That's a very interesting point because two hours away from where I live, it's a way cheaper. It's like half as much money. So flipping Eric lives in a county with a hundred thousand people. Um, and you have multiple Ross stores. There are 200 Ross TJ Maxx and Marshall's where I live and over 200 thrift stores. So what do you think? Do you want to live in a place that has um, 200 thrift stores and 200 retail stores, but tons of competition? Or do you want to live where maybe you go to the store and you're the only person looking for the deals? I don't know. Do I have a good online research tool for eBay? Yes. If you go to um, dailyrefinement.com in my blog section, I recommend Zik Analytics. Best tool for researching researching tools besides TerraPeak, which is free if you have an eBay store. Um, do I recommend to go shopping in the morning and list in the afternoon? I recommend you don't do any listing yourself ever. It's a waste of time. Unless you like listing. Some people love listing. Put in the chat if you love listing. I want to know how many people in the chat right now wake up and they're like, I wish I could start listing. I love it so much. Let me know. Um, Annie is saying, is there a downside that I'm missing? No, eBay is trying to capitalize on new sellers. Ooh, good living loves listing. Awesome. Tommy Z says hate and love relationship. Awesome. Yeah, this is a pretty big, this is a pretty big thermos. It's awesome. And the best part of it is a magnetic lid. So it's one gallon. It just makes my life easier because if I drink one gallon of water a day, I just feel a lot better. Bluegrass is, uh, is making me happy because I love people who just make it work wherever they're living, right? I live in a more expensive area, but I still want to live here. Just live wherever you want to live and whatever inspires you. Um, let's see. You're in Atlanta and it's no longer a small town. I love Atlanta. I can't wait to visit. Can't wait to visit. Um, you triple list on eBay. So, Julius, never say you have no choice, okay? Somebody that has, like, no arms, they actually have no choice. But, like, if you have two arms and two legs and you, you, can, you can do whatever you want, don't say that you have no choice. That's really frustrating. You have way more choices than most people. Um, let's see. Small towns that typically find larger ROIs. Okay. Um, you're a control freak. You like to sell antique clothing. Yeah, that's true. Um, you love it. You try to do spreadsheets and multi-list when you can. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Savannah is a good market. Don't say that on YouTube because then a bunch of people will move there. 
Brickhouse Salvage and Antiques. What's up? Um, you live in the southern side of upstate New York. No thrift stores. Lots of barns and garage sales. Killing it so far. I love it. I love the category of salvage. Okay, so I love it. Because it's like not only are you selling stuff that literally is garbage for someone. It has the coolest um, secondhand feel to it because like it's like a container of something that had water damage that would have gone straight into a landfill. But if you drop it off at a salvage dealer, they can turn that into something that people might actually use. They can repurpose it, which I think is is very cool. Flip the Thrift says, I also make it work with yard sales and thrift stores. I love it. I'm not saying you can't make it work. I'm just saying that it's kind of exhausting to, to continuously do that forever. Sometimes it's nice to have things sell without you having to go get it. Joseph Mayo says 26 Goodwills within 45 minutes of Atlanta. Damn. What What is the industry in Atlanta? Does anybody know? Is it telecommunication? I think um, I've been to Atlanta twice. I, I can't remember. And I had a trip scheduled that was canceled because of what the situation we're in. What is Atlanta known for? Is it, I feel like Turner, that communications company is there. I don't know what, what, why does Atlanta have that old money? It, it does though. I think it does. Um, so Andrew is saying, Andrew is a paraplegic and has to use a power chair in the UK. Has to adjust because of a spinal cord injury, but love of business and opportunity has given, see, see like Andrew is a paraplegic. So, Julius, you're not allowed to complain because there's people that literally are making this work no matter what. CNN. Somebody says CNN. Coca-Cola. Awesome. Yeah, Atlanta Atlanta has some money. I've seen some crazy houses out there. Um, let's see. Yes, you sell a ton of stuff that gets repurposed. Yeah, I mean, it's it's cool being a salvage dealer. It's very, very cool. Every reseller has to run local on their model or has to think. Yeah, that's true. You have to look at your model and decide what you're going to do five years from now. That's great advice from Joe. Bluegrass picker sold a handmade Patrick uh, Mahone's journey. Mahone's Mahomes journey Jersey with the shadow box. That's, I mean, I like shopping at um, antique booths. I just don't know if I want to run it. Um, Atlanta is known for music, large corporations, good food and nightlife. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I love Atlanta. I definitely, I went there twice and I was going to go there again to meet a vintage dealer. No, I'm going to visit Atlanta. There's a lot of cool people that I want to visit in, in Atlanta. A lot of cool resellers and I'm excited to go, but guys, I'm going to hop off. I've got a couple other things to get done today before the end of the day. Um, I encourage you guys to make progress. The whole point of this video was to let you guys know that, I feel like companies are doing really, really good right now or really, really bad. Okay, so really, really bad means there's able to lots of stuff to liquidate and sell for us resellers. Really, really good. They're kind of getting more picky. So if you're looking to get deals from really high-end companies, it's going to get harder to get in there because they're really busy right now. So again, guys, smash the like button. Love you all. Make progress daily.